Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A couple weeks ago, I did a video demonstrating the new and improved remove tool in Photoshop. At that time though, this new and improved tool was still in beta and only available in the beta version of Photoshop. Well, with the recent update to Photoshop, Adobe has taken this tool out of beta and have included it in the current version of Photoshop. In today's video, I'm going to show you how it works. Now, I'm not going to bury the lead. The main question is, is it actually improved? And the answer is yes. If you had seen that video I did a couple weeks ago, and by the way, if you haven't, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. In that video, I loaded a number of images into the beta version of Photoshop, which included the new and improved tool. And I took those same images and I loaded them into what was the current version of Photoshop, which didn't include the new tool. And what I did is I compared them to one another. And in every single instance, the new and improved tool outperformed what was the current tool. So it is a welcome addition to the current version of Photoshop. Now, let me show you how it works. As you can see, I have this image opened up into Photoshop. This is Ohio Stadium. This is, of course, the huge football stadium on Ohio State University. And let's just say I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to remove this little kiosk over here. So I'm going to get this new and improved tool. To do that, tap the J key on your keyboard. The J key is the keyboard for not only this remove tool, but a number of others. So make sure you're using the correct one by going to the toolbar long pressing with left mouse button, and then making sure you're using the remove tool, which is the band-aid with those two stars. This is the new and improved tool. Now you could add to the selection or subtract to the selection. So obviously we don't have any selection yet, so we need to add. Then you could go over here and you could use generative AI. Uh, use generative AI for complex things. If you're not removing something complex, I suggest you, lose, you leave it off. Um, you could use auto, but I like to, if I'm doing something simple like this, let's say this Ohio State kiosk over here, um, I'll leave it off because it will work a lot faster. Then I'm going to uh, sample all layers. I just have a single layer, so that doesn't matter. Uh, remove after each stroke is an option, but I like to paint everything, then hit the little check mark. And I want to create a new layer. So I'm not going to do this removal on the background layer. So what I'll do is I have a brush. I could change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller. Right bracket key larger. Then I'm just going to paint over this kiosk like this. And you can see that there's a light red overlay being put on the kiosk. Let go. Go up here. Click the little check mark. And you'll notice that it removes it. And it messed up maybe a little bit over here. You could come in and paint over there and remove it again. And you can see then it did a great job. So very easy to use. Now, granted, I didn't use generative AI. I just painted and removed. But as I mentioned, for something simple, I suggest you leave generative AI off because it will work much faster. But I want to remove all these people. This is a lot more complex. So in this instance, I definitely want to have generative AI on. So I'm going to go over here and turn this on. And the way you would remove these people is you would go to this drop down where it says find distractions and go to people and you'll notice it's editable. What that means is when you click people, it will find the people and it will put a red overlay on them, but it won't remove them yet. What it will allow you to do is to add and or subtract from the selection. I have this plus brush. So if it missed a person, I could add it. If it selected something that isn't a person, person, maybe a sculpture or something, I could use a minus brush and remove the overlay from that. In this case, it selected the people just fine. I definitely want to use generative AI. And I'm going to click the check mark. Now, the thing about using generative AI with the remove tool is it doesn't cost you any generative credits. So you don't have to worry about having generative credits to do this. It's basically free. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. I'm going to hold in the command key on my Mac and hit the plus key on my keyboard a couple times to zoom in. And I'm just going to scroll down. And you can see it did a pretty good job. Uh, where, where we fail often is because there's this like temporary like fence or gate. It would like have that blended into the wall behind it. And then there's these other more permanent type gates in the back. And it would like have those duplicated on the walls. And it would just mess up. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. Now let's go to something else. Let's go to this image with the um, 
the telephone lines or the power lines. I often use this image uh, when I demonstrate removing power lines. And in the past, with just the regular version of Photoshop, it didn't do a good job uh, removing these. It often would distort the houses behind the power lines. It would leave like lines and like look like the si siding was burnt or there was a fire or something. So anyway, let's get rid of the power lines. So again, with the actual remove tool, go up to find distractions and go to wires and cables. Now, this is not editable. It's a one-click removal. So you're just going to click on it, and then it's going to take time to find those cables and remove them. This will take a little longer. And while it's doing this, I just want to mention very quickly that I am going to be releasing a brand new course on Lightroom. It's masking in Lightroom. And while it's on pre-sale, you could save quite a bit. In the description below this, uh, video. I'll have a link to my website. You could get it for $29.99. That's pretty cheap if you ask me. And again, that's during the pre-sale. Once it's actually released on August 11th, it will cost considerably more. So again, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now, it's removing these power lines. It's still doing it. As I mentioned, this is going to take a little longer. And you can see it did a pretty good job. Now, it did leave some lines on this building here in this building over here i could see just a glance so again i'll zoom in but not as bad as it used to i mean it used to look like the siding was melted when it used to do it before but here it's not too bad and it kind of messed up this building here but you'd have to use maybe a clone stamp tool to fix that but it did a much better job than it has historically so it definitely is improved still not perfect but improved Let's go to another image here. Uh, this is an image I often use for these types of videos. It's a relatively simple image. We just have some people there. But we also have an added thing here. We have their shadows. So I want to remove the people and the shadows. So again, with the Remove tool, we'll go to Find Distractions. We're going to go to People. And it found the people. You can see the red overlay on the people. But it also has a uh, shadow over here. You can see that it added the shadow of this person, or these people over here, but it added a uh, mask, I should say, or an overlay here. Um, there's no people there. There's no shadow there. So that's a mistake. So I'm going to go to the minus brush, and I'm going to erase it from there because it doesn't have to do anything there. All right? So again, we're going to make sure we're using generative AI. We're going to create a new layer, and we're going to click the little check mark. So now it'll use generative AI to remove these people and a little bit of shadow that is there. And I found that this usually works great. Now, unlike other generative functions you might do in Photoshop, it doesn't give you three variations. It just gives you this one. So if this didn't work, you would hit Command or Control Z to undo it, and then you'd do it again. Now, in this case here, it worked pretty well. So let me zoom in again. And it looked, you could see that it worked perfectly, really. Nothing to complain about there. That looks great. Now, one more image. This is another one that I often use in these videos because it usually fails on this image all the time. Uh, we have this observation area here. And as you can see, the observation area, and you might not be able to see, but you could see that the it's implied in the photo. Uh, there's stairs. I'm standing at the top of the stairs, and I could walk down these stairs to this observation area. There's also over here, which is obscured by the trees, a ramp. So if someone can't use the stairs, they could access this observation area with the ramp. What often would happen in the past, or what always happened in the past, is for some reason it would build wall, a wall, and like block off this ramp and a build a wall over here. So you had these weird walls for whatever reason. Well, let's just see what it does now. So we'll go up here. And we're going to remove the people again. So it has an overlay on the people. It found some, found some people down here also, but that's okay. And it didn't find these people here. So I want to use a plus brush, and I want to remove these people here. Or maybe it did. I just can't see the overlay because it's kind of hard. All right. Uh, we're going to sample all layers. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to click the little check mark. And it's using AI to do it. So it's going to take a little while. And by the way, on my website, I have a ton of free PDFs you could download that are keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop and a ton of other applications. Uh, you could download those and print them at home. I'll have a link to that again in the description below this video. Now you can see that um, it's improved. It's still not perfect. This is probably the one image that it had the most uh, trouble with historically. 
but it did okay. I mean, it didn't totally block off the ramp, maybe. It's hard to tell. Um, but we have these weird walls now. But again, if you didn't like it, what you would do is you would hit Command or Control Z is, or Z and undo it. Then you would go back up and go to Find Distractions, People. Let it find the people again. Hit the check mark again. Let it do it again. And again, this doesn't cost you any generative credit, so you don't have to worry about um, this costing you in the long run. And this one failed also. Although the walls are better, this fence is kind of messed up. Now, I could probably use the clone stamp tool and fix that. But again, Commander Control Z, come back up here, hit people, and hit the check mark. What I would prefer they do is give you some variation so you didn't have to do this every single time. Uh, but hey, we got it though. Third time charm. That looks actually pretty good. Uh, in the past, before there was the new and improved tool, it really never satisfactorily, satisfactorily, it never removed the people uh, in a satisfactory way. Uh, let's put it that way. So that's it. That's the new and improved remove tool in Photoshop. Now, again, in the description of this video, I'll have a link to my new Lightroom course. And again, you could save big during the pre-sale. And I'll have a link to those free uh, PDFs that are keyboard shortcuts for a ton of different applications. I forgot how many are there, but there's a lot, including Photoshop, um, Lightroom, Classic, uh, the Lightroom CC, ton of other apps. Uh, again, you could download all those for free, print them at home. Um, also, if you value my content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. And always, thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.